What have we already learned? We have spoken about Hinduism previously. What are some characteristics of Hinduism? How many gods and goddesses are there? What is the name of the followers of Hinduism? What is the name of their holy text? What is the name of their holy place? Were there any important figures? What else do you remember about Hinduism? Today, your purpose for listening is to listen carefully to find out what Buddhism is. Look at this photograph. Do you have any ideas about what it could be? This is the great stupa of Sanchi, one of many sacred or holy dome-shaped shrines built all over Asia to honor the Buddha, the founder of Buddhism. Today you will learn a little bit about Buddhism, the world's fourth largest religion, and the Buddhist who practices religion. Remember, the thir world's third largest religion is Hinduism. It all began about 2,500 years ago with the birth of Siddhartha, Gautama, in the foothills of the Himalayan mountains. Siddhartha was a prince born to very rich parents. Siddhartha's parents loved him very much, so much in fact, that they wanted to protect him from all the suffering or misery and pain in the world. By doing so, they thought he would always be happy. So Siddhartha was kept behind the walls of the palace and was given everything he wanted fine food, beautiful clothes, wonderful toys, and plenty of servants. Siddhartha knew very little about life outside the palace walls. Then, as Siddhartha grew into a young man, he began to venture out beyond the walls of the palace. That means he began to explore beyond the palace walls. Driven by a servant in a horse-drawn chariot, Siddhartha was shocked and dismayed to see what his parents had kept hidden from him. On one trip, he saw a poor old woman bent over and barely able to stand. On another, he saw a sick and hungry man lying by the side of the road, crying out for help. On a third trip, Siddhartha saw two people weeping or crying all around him. People were suffering. Siddhartha began to worry about all of these people outside the palace walls. What, he wondered, could he do to help them? What do you think Siddhartha could do to help these people? Seeing all of the suffering, Siddhartha could no longer be happy with his comfortable life, and so he made the decision to leave his riches behind. One night he crept out of the palace, moved beyond its walls, and headed out along India's dusty roads in search of answers to his questions. Do you think Siddhartha found answers to his questions of how he could help people who suffered? For many years, Siddhartha wandered the land, studying with spiritual teachers along the way. He was forever asking his teachers how to conquer or overcome suffering and achieve happiness on earth. None of their answers seemed to satisfy him. One night, stopping to rest beneath a fig tree, Siddhartha crossed his legs and vowed that he would not move until he had the answers to his questions. How long do you think Siddhartha will have to sit there before he can answer his questions? of how to conquer suffering and achieve happiness. Siddhartha sat under the fig tree for seven weeks, that's 49 days, meditating on his questions. When he finally had the answers he was searching for, he felt like an entirely different person. During those seven weeks, he believed he had received enlightenment. In Buddhism, when someone receives enlightenment, it means the person gains a greater understanding of life, no longer desires worldly goods, and is then believed to be free from suffering. Siddhartha now thought he had a new and deeper understanding about life, why people suffer, and how to end suffering on earth. Siddhartha became known as the Buddha, meaning one who is awake, or the enlightened one. What do you suppose Siddhartha, the Buddha, learned during those seven weeks? The Buddha learned several lessons and his lessons became known as the Four Noble Truths. These truths are, all people experience suffering and unhappiness. Suffering and unhappiness come from greed or desiring or wanting too many worldly things. Suffering and unhappiness end when unrealistic desires end. 
if something is unrealistic, that means that it's very difficult or impossible to achieve. And fourth, people can end suffering and unhappiness by following a few basic rules. The Buddha's rules may sound familiar to you. They include rules like be kind to others, do not tell lies or cheat or steal, do not be selfish, do not harm people or animals, train your mind to think clearly. The word train, as used in this sentence, means to practice skills. The Buddha lived a long life traveling through India, teaching others about the Four Noble Truths and his rules for life. He had many followers in his lifetime, and Buddhism spread to many lands after his death. One person who is credited with helping the spread of Buddhism is a powerful ruler named Asoka. Asoka was not always an enlightened person. Rather, he was a warrior king who led many soldiers into battle, wounding and killing thousands of people as he expanded his great empire. But one particularly violent battle changed Asoka's life. As he rode across the battlefield, seeing how his desires to rule a great empire hurt others, he became horrified by what he had done. Asoka decided that day to change his life and study the teachings of the Buddha. From then on, instead of sending men into battle, he became nonviolent and sent trained teachers throughout Asia to spread the teachings of Buddhism. Often traveling in great caravans, Asoka's trained teachers did more, much more than preach and teach. In India and far beyond, they carried food and medicine to help people in need. Asoka also ordered his teachers to build hospitals for peoples and animals dig wells and irrigation ditches, plant shade trees by the road to comfort weary travelers, and to build roads to ease traveling from place to place. Which of these good works do you see in this image? Asoka made sure the Buddhist messages of peace and kindness were carved on big rocks and stone monuments all over India. Although he allowed his people to practice Hinduism and other religions, he wanted everyone to be enlightened by the teachings of Buddha. Stupas, like the one you saw at the beginning of this read aloud, already existed, but Ahsoka built many more stupas to hold relics or important historical objects of the Buddha. Today, Buddhists travel from all over the world to worship at these sacred shrines.